Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mickey the Bookworm and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, show you guys some books that I plan on never on hauling. I'm still pretty new to the whole booktube thing so you guys don't really know me super well yet but I've said a couple times on here that I don't really keep a lot of books in my permanent collection. I'm somebody who when I'm done reading a book I'll either resell it or donate it or gift it to a friend. I really don't keep a lot of books permanently. I have a lot of books around me, but I don't necessarily keep them a lot. It's a constant cycle in and out. So only the books that I absolutely love and adore are part of my permanent collection. I also am kind of a person that will buy like collector's editions of books that I love. And I, if I'm gonna have them on my shelf, um, then I want them to be like really nice, like with gorgeous cover art and spines and that kind of thing. So a lot of the books that I do buy with the intention of keeping are ones that are like collector's editions too and look really pretty. I'm probably going to express some unpopular opinions about cover art <laughs> going forward. Um, and. That's okay, I know they're unpopular opinions, you don't have to tell me, but anyway, let's get on with it. I'll just kind of move down my bookshelf and show you guys what's in my permanent collection. So, the first book that I plan on never unhauling, I actually just bought this past um, summer, late summer, early fall at the main Scottish Festival and Highland Games in Topsom, which happens every year. And I am from a Scottish family, loosely. I mean, as much as any white American, I guess. My mom's maiden name was Campbell. And so my family is from Clan Campbell of Argyle on my mom's dad's side. And we have some people in our family that are like super into the history. I just like going to the Scottish games cause like it's a good time. But anyway, I stopped by the clan tent for Clan Campbell and they had this collector's edition book that they actually bought in the gift shop at the castle that's essentially the ancestral home of our clan in Scotland. So it's Inverary. And this book is actually signed by the Duke of Argyle, who's probably like a long lost cousin, like who knows how many generations back. But it's pretty cool. It gives a lot of like clan history and history of the castle, um, some of the artifacts that they house there. It's pretty neat. So this is something that I'll never unhaul because obviously I bought it specifically because it is like a collector's item. One of these days I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Inverary and I'm totally gonna tour it. It is open to the public at certain times of year in Scotland and it's definitely on my bucket list. But yeah, so that's the first book I will never unhaul. Let's see if I can get it back in here. Oh my word, my bookshelf is really full. All right, moving on, what's the next one? Okay, this is Preparing for Easter. It's a collection with excerpts from some of C.S. Lewis's works. I've said before in an earlier video, I adore C.S. Lewis, I love his writing. He is just like so full of wisdom and his writing story, Writing style reminds me a lot of talking to my grandpa. And so I just really like C.S. Lewis. My mom got this for me um, and I read it every year during the Lenten calendar because it's actually set up to follow Lent and I observe Lent. So I I love this every year. Like it's one of the things I look forward to is going back through this and I have like a short, like two or three page reading and it's not a very big book. So it's like a really short reading each day um, during Lent and 
so I'll see S. Lewis. So I mean, what could be better? It's like one of the things I love best about the Easter season. So I will never unhaul this. It is one of my favorite parts of like spring reading and I read it every year. Right. The next one, this one is really, really pretty. And I literally ordered it from a bookshop in England because it was the only book that like <laughs> met my standards of what a collector's edition is supposed to look like. But this is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I love F. Scott Fitzgerald. He's one of my favorite writers and The Great Gatsby has been one of my favorite books ever since I had to read it for a high school English class. <laughs> and I actually really liked it, maybe because I'm a nerd, but I just think the story is really beautiful and I just adore this book. I love the Roaring Twenties as a like time setting and I like F. Scott Fitzgerald as a writer. Um, this was really like my first introduction to his work, but I bought this specifically to keep in my collection. I've got my little name stamp on there and yeah. So <laughs> this is one of those unpopular opinions because I know that most editions of The Great Gatsby are done with the original cover art. Like the normal cover that you see for The Great Gatsby is the original cover art from the 1920s when it was published. I don't love that cover. Like I can see, <laughs> objectively, I can see why it's important to have that cover and I think it's cool that they've kept it through all these different editions and printings but I just don't love that cover. So when I was looking for a copy of The Great Gatsby to put in my library I wanted something a little bit prettier and so I ordered this and like I said I know that's an unpopular opinion but I just really feel like this story that's like so like everything in it revolves around the whole like excess and the frivolity and the culture of the Roaring Twenties. It needs to have an Art Deco cover. It just does. And this, I love this. I'm like totally in love with this cover so much. While we are on the topic of F. Scott Fitzgerald, my mom knows me pretty well and she one year for Christmas got me this collection of short stories published by F. Scott Fitzgerald um, Flappers and Philosophers so it's just a bunch of his like shorter works he did do short stories and he put this collection out in the 1920s it's not as well known as a lot of his other work but all of these you can read in one sitting and they're all pretty fun and some of them are kind of whimsical. There's pirates and scandalous love stories. It's it's just a good time. So I really like having this book in my collection too because it's just like a really fun example of some of Fitzgerald's work. All right. Get that one back in there. The next one is also a book that I bought specifically because of the cover. I adore Little Women and I just love the way that this book was done. I know it's flipped backwards on my camera, but I think you can still see kind of what's happening with it. So yeah, I just, it's so pretty. I love Little Women. It's such an important book in American history and in women's history <laughs> and I don't know, I guess I need to vent about this for a second because I, in the last few years, have started to hear like this criticism of Little Women, like all these things that are problematic in it, and they don't seem to realize like the history and the backstory, and they want to make fun of it, and they want to point fingers at all these problems, and I want to be like, do you realize how pivotal of a work that this was? Like, I mean... Louisa May Alcott wrote, th wrote this in the 1800s, like, you, you, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but you can't take the standards from like 2020 and apply them to the 1860s because they were not where we are. And she was actually trying to like, show some of the harm in some of the things that were going on in that society. 
Um, this book is, it, it, it's a pretty feminist work, honestly, especially for the time. So anyway, I adore it. I adore it as a book. I adore it for its place in American history. Um, Ella, Louisa May Alcott, awesome writer. So I really, really had to have a pretty edition of this. Okay, there's only a few more that I will never unhaul. The first two I'll just take out at once. I actually showed these in my last video, The 10,000 Doors of January and Where the Crawdads Sing. Both of these were such beautiful books and I was debating for a while whether or not I was going to unhaul Where the Crawdads Sing because I, like I said, I unhaul almost everything. Um, but I decided it was such a beautiful story that whether I wanted to reread it or not, I felt like this would become a classic and I adored it and I wanted to own it. So I went ahead and put my little stamp in it. I also ordered the 10,000 Doors of January specially and put my stamp in it because I just loved it so much when I read it and I was like this is one that I will want to go back and reread because there was just so much happening in it and it was such a beautiful story and yeah I just had to have it. Okay and I think there's just like yeah one more book that I will never unhaul. This is Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee, and loosely speaking, it's sort of the sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird, but it's not really the sequel. Same characters, same players, but it's Scout is grown up, and she comes back and kind of finds out her dad that she worshipped has feet of clay. Um, and so it's a little bit even more of a like coming of age tale, more like into like the journey into adulthood. And I really liked it. I read To Kill a Mockingbird for the first time in my early 20s. And then I read this right after and really liked it. I don't have a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird yet, but at some point I definitely want to have one. So anyway, that's all the books that I will never unhaul, and I just thought, hey, this would be a kind of fun video to do. I hope you like it. If you guys have any more ideas on content or things you want to see from me, let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can do.